Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to do a bit of an overview of the latest upgrades in Blender 2.66. Um, there's quite a few new things going on, lots of bug fixes and stuff. Uh, but I'm just going to focus on the four uh, biggest things that I found um, that was sort of stood out to me as quite nice new things uh, for Blender to have. Um, so go on over to blender.org and download the latest version if you haven't already so you can follow along with what I'm doing. Um, I'll just quickly turn on my screencast keys. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the upgraded bevel tool. Um, so I'll just tab into edit mode and we can now uh, bevel on vertices. So I'll just select a couple of vertices and go bevel. And then as we move up and down you can see that the bevel is working on just the vertices there. Uh, we can adjust the amount of segments and make sure um, that vertex only is selected, otherwise uh, you'll be just beveling along the edge, which may actually be what you want. Um, and because of B-Mesh, it, uh, it generates uh, N-Gons, as you would call them. Um, so polygons with lots of faces, so you don't have to worry about creating lots of extra weird edges at the modeling stage. Um, so that's quite nice. Yeah, you can do some cool stuff and adjust the the offset and stuff like that. Um, so the next thing is the dynamic topology sculpting, uh, which is basically where the brush that you're brushing with, um, it dynamically updates the mesh rather than you having to use a multi-resolution modifi modifier. Uh, you can now just brush and it will add in detail. Um, so we'll go into sculpt mode, and then if I start off, um, I will I'll turn on my symmetry. I think I want it on Y. No, I want it on X. There we go. So I'm in the front view and I'm sculpting stuff, and then normally I'd want to go. Okay, I've got enough detail in this level. I'm gonna uh, hit a button and go up to the next level. Um, but if you go to topology, you can enable dynamic, and then you'll see everything sort of starts to turn into triangles, that's okay. Uh, you just start sculpting. Now you might think, oh, it's a bit faceted, so turn on smooth shading here, um, which you have to do here rather than going into uh, shade smooth uh, normally, because um, it needs to uh, update it, the smooth shading dynamically through this setting. Um, and you can just use all your normal sculpting tools. And it'll look quite, quite cool. Uh, you can do some fun things with that. Um, so it's like sculpting in Sculptrize. Um, this feature was sort of tested a while ago, uh, but for some reason they took it out, and obviously they've been working on it in the background, um, and it now works quite nicely. Uh, you can adjust the detail size. So the smaller number here, the more detail you're going to get in your brush strokes. So if I turn it all the way up to 100, um, it's gonna only add in a little bit of extra detail as far as extra polygons goes and it might not even be adding in any um, but if we bring this down it sort of it starts its default is 30 so if I bring it down to 20 you'll see I'm now adding in a lot more vertices a lot more faces and all that sort of stuff um, but you can use it to bring in a lot of detail um, I'm just using the draw brush at the moment but I can go to clay and just build up some topology that way. Let me turn the strength up just so you can see. And this is all without um, adjusting any uh, subdivision levels or anything like that. It's just dynamically adding more stuff uh, to the mesh. Uh, we can go to crease and bring in some creases. Like that. Uh, we can, uh, you can do pretty much anything anything here, um, and you can, of course, come up with your own brushes as well uh, by changing the stroke, uh, sorry, not the stroke, the curve, although you can play with the stroke and the curve to uh, create your own sort of brushes, um, and they will, should all work with the dynamic topology, um, so it's a really cool sort of tool. 
Um, so when it comes to sculpting you can really add in a lot of detail to your mes meshes um, a lot more than before and it's a lot easier to do it as well uh, which is really cool okay so next is the rigid body sim uh, so I will go back to object mode and I'll just start off by creating a plane and then I'm going to scale this up uh, in edit mode because um, you want the scaling to be at, set at 1 uh, for every dimension because that will tend to mess with the way the simulation works so then I'll go to the physics panel and turn on rigid body and then I want the plane to be passive and then I will add in a cube and I'll shrink that down a bit in edit mode and bring it up here and turn that into a rigid body and just leave the defaults as they are um, so we can quickly put together a rigid body simulation and if you don't know what that is it's basically where a bunch of objects realistically and dynamically uh, collide with each other and react to forces like gravity so if I wanted a tower of bricks like that to fall down all I've got to do is hit Alt A and they all fall down like normal and it looks pretty cool um, this is done with the bullet physics engine which uh, it was in the just in the game engine uh, but now uh, it's in the rest of Blender um, so we can very quickly as you saw just then uh, you can very quickly throw together a physics simulation um, you can do that with pretty much any object and just a couple of quick tips if you're going to be really pedantic about having things sort of resting directly on the floor you can see that the plane that I created uh, is level at the floor here uh, but everything's sitting a little bit above that so you can turn on uh, collision sensitivity and just bring that down to like the zero one um, and that will now everything's um, landing directly on the floor um, things do tend to intersect a little bit but um, that lack of accuracy uh, is the payoff for having it work really quickly and really nicely um, there is a lot of settings that you can play with um, and there's a lot of stuff that you can do uh, with force fields and stuff um, that should all work with the rigid body sim um, so yeah I think that's just about all I really need to cover for the basics of that um, last and probably the biggest sort of thing that people have been talking about a lot uh, is hair support in the cycles render engine um, now I haven't covered much if anything I don't think um, of the cycles uh, render engine just because it sort of takes a bit longer to get stuff done in it um, and up until recently the results have been sort of plagued with a desperate need to go into Photoshop and clear up fireflies and stuff like that but that's those sort of bugs seem to have been ironed out um, so it's I might start uh, covering a little bit of cycles in my tutorials um, but for now to show you the hair working in cycles um, I'll just quickly throw together some hair I um, don't think I need any of this anymore so I'll just delete all that so I'll bring in a sphere and then I will create a particle system, set it to hair. Um, I want to turn up the segments a bit and I'll turn on hair dynamics and um, in order to get it to render in cycles we need to turn on the cycles render, go to the render settings, change the feature set to experimental if you have the option here, um, set it to CPU instead of GPU because um, otherwise you won't get any color working uh, when you render um, and I want to turn on some simple children and then that will do for right now so I'll just hit Alt A and I should get some hair falling down and I'll just let that settle probably about there, so that looks fine 
Um, so it's pretty big here, but um, it's just as an example. Um, so I will just do a quick render, test render to see how everything's looking. So it looks like hair at the moment, um, but obviously it's quite thick and there's a lot of it going on. Um, so we can, using these cycles hair settings here, uh, we can change how thick the each hair strand is. Um, so I will just cancel that render. And so shape um, is the taper of the uh, hair strand and setting it to about uh, negative 0.75 uh, will get you a nice smooth taper down rather than tapering out. Um, and I want the width to be point, something like 0 0.02 um, so it's really small. Close tip's fine and you want the tip to be zero because um, you want the the hair to basically come down to nothing at the end. Um, so if we do another quick test render just have a sip of my coffee so you can start to see that the, each uh, hair strand is really thin. Uh, it's very grainy at the moment um, that's just a uh, that's just because we're in cycles um, obviously we, I think we've got it set to 10 uh, passes that it does at the moment uh, which isn't very much for cycles so it tends to look quite grainy um, but that's okay so we've got the hair sort of the right sort of thickness and stuff um, and there's a good amount of hair so that looks okay so to put a texture on the hair um, in cycles you'll as you hit uh, to new to create a new material you'll notice that uh, everything's a bit different to what it might usually be. Um, I'll just give it a name here. Um, and we can set an image here. Uh, not here. There we go, an on color image texture. And then I'm just going to go to here and just use a. I'm just using a, a wooden picture for a texture. Um, for the hair because it just it has a sort of brown color that's got some variation in the color in it so you get some variation of color in the hair texture um, we can also do a strand preview of hair with using sort of cycles so we can get an idea of what it's looking like at the moment it's quite flat and uh, not very shiny or anything like that which hair is so I'm just going to bring up a, another window here set it to a node editor and these are the nodes that are currently powering the uh, hair material that we've got and we've got the image texture going into the diffuse which goes into the material output which is uh, which, what's on the surface of the hair or the uh, object um, so I'll just add in a so just with shift A I'll add in a probably a glossy node um, and we'll set we'll also create a shader mix shader which both of these can go into oh. uh, we want to set there so you'll see over here it's gone to very a very white sort of color um, so we'll set that to point zero two so there's a little bit of shininess uh, that will come up on the hair, uh, but the colour's still very much there. Um, and it's, you can sort of play with the settings here. Um, I'll probably turn that down, or even up, to say 1, just to see how it goes. Maybe turn it down a little bit. Um, so we've got a basic shader set up, where everything is piping through all the way to the end. Um, so we'll hit F12 to do a test render. It might take a little bit longer because now there's a texture on there. And there's a shader as well. So you can sort of see there's the brown on there um, and it looks okay. Uh, it's looking quite dark at the moment, compared to especially compared to that preview. Um, that's just the lighting setup.
It's kind of just the basic singlet setup. Um, I will turn that into a sunlight. That tends to brighten it up a bit. Nice and easy, yeah. So that's closer to the sort of colour that we were looking at in the preview. And that's pretty much it as far as um, rendering hair in cycles goes. Um, obviously there's a lot more to working with hair and hair particles and stuff like that. Um, that's a whole series of tutorials on its own, um, so I won't cover that. Um, but you can get some fairly nice looking hair. I mean this is just with default render settings. It looks alright. Um, it's obviously not going to be sort of straight close up on the screen but for a sort of background character that would be fine as hair. Um, if you want your, to work on your scene and make it look a bit better um, obviously you can increase the resolution of the render so you can get more pixels actually in there. Um, and you also want to play with sampling. Uh, the render samples is currently set to 10, which is the same as preview, which is what you would get in the viewport. Um, I did a test render at a thousand samples um, with pretty much identical settings to what's here, and this is what it looks like. Um, same amount of particles, same texture. I think the um, the shader was slightly different on a couple of the settings, but it was the same setup in every other way. It was just a single uh, sunlight, and that's some very nice looking hair. Um, so, yeah, turn up your render settings and you'll get some really nice results. Um, so I think that covers just about everything I was going to go for um, as far as the latest Blender 2.66 goes. Um, so make sure you go to blender.org and get your copy if you haven't already. Um, and next week we will continue on with uh, the short film that we're slowly working on. Uh, so good luck, have fun, uh, make sure you subscribe and like to all of my stuff, uh, there's links in the description box. Um, yeah, and I'll see you next time.